find it all the time or do you attack it, you set it up and attack it every, every now and again? Now, some guys go one way, some go the other. I preferred the other way, where you didn't bowl so much that maybe if you get through it, it becomes a strength. So you've got to suss that out yourself. Now, the bouncer um, is like a Yorker, uh, which is a, a, obviously a different type of ball that you're trying to, to bowl to unsettle the guy. Now, a bouncer, you pick it out. Maybe if generally, if a guy is very much a back footer, a Yorker is not a bad ball to bowl to him all the time, you know, every now and again, sorry, not all the time, every now and again. The basic front footer, then you slip the short one into him to get him, unsettle him, try and get him to hook, or get him sort of a ducking or whatever, for playing. You've got to work out when to bowl that. Don't use it too much, just use it when it's right. One Obviously final thought, Dennis, in your career, time, you'll cut back your speed in the end, you, you came off a shorter run, and, uh, got more movement, a lot of your experience went into that. Uh, is that something you recommend to all bowlers, that maybe someone in club cricket now is saying, well, I'm nearly finished, or could I shorten my run-up like Dennis Lilly? Well, I think, um, by and large, a run-up is a personal thing, and it's something that uh, should be started off and built up slowly, whether it's short or long run. Reach a peak momentum, uh, and that doesn't mean you're going flat out, but a, a momentum that's right for you to get in, on balance to bowl. And that's something you've got to sort out for yourself, whether it's a short or long run. Longer run, by and large, has helped guys just to, to get that balance and coordination. Shorter run, you can still get it off that, but guys don't feel that uh, they're, they're sort of getting as much out of it as they can. And maybe it's only a yard difference in it, but that, can, that yard can make a, a hell of a difference when you're not moving a ball maybe so much. Mm. What I recommend is for young lads to actually have a shorter run and a longer run. So use it in the nets, practice it in the nets, use their long run for nets, mainly for the net practice and, and in a game. But if the occasion suits a dead wicket, maybe the ball isn't doing too much, you can concentrate on getting a better line and length off a shorter run, then use it in the match. But have, have, having practiced for years in the nets, then use it. Same sort of thing, an older guy, getting a bit long in the tooth, it's harder to run in off a longer run. He feels he can bowl, get a bit more movement and a bit more accurately off a shorter run, then go for the shorter run. Work it out, what suits you, bowl off the shorter run and you'll prolong your life in the game. Well, that's true, but Dennis. Maybe the, uh, the Australian message will, uh, through this MCC video, become universal. Let's hope so. But thanks very much. Tony, thank you. No praise can be too high for Dennis Lilly, especially concerning his courage, a prime requisite in top-class fast bowling. A fast bowling is not only about fitness and stamina, but about the size of a man's heart. Dennis Lilly proved that his was very large indeed when he fought his way back into international cricket after a serious back injury. It threatened to end his career, but he came back as the number one fast bowler in the world. Ray Illingworth may be remembered more for his captaincy than his offspin, but he was a bowler who commanded the respect of the best batsmen in the world. Always bowl him! The fact that he was an all-rounder, who scored over 24,000 runs, gave him an understanding of batsmen, which, of course, helped him bowl to them well. Offspinner from Ray Illingworth, and so it's not to be a hundred partnership. Ray Illingworth, captain of Leicestershire and England, spent many hours analysing the play of his teammates and opponents. He learned his slow bowling craft in the solid school of Yorkshire cricket and was an integral part of that county's run of successes in the 1960s. Seven county championship wins in all. Ray moved to Leicestershire for ten seasons and led them to their first ever titles. Then, at the age of 50, he went back to Yorkshire briefly as captain before joining the BBC television commentary box where he now shares his great experience with the public at large. The first time ever, I can remember I was just born in school much. I was born in 
seemed medium pace then, and I just tried a couple of off spinners. And the schoolmaster, who was from another school, I can't remember which school it was now, said, you can suddenly turn a ball like that, you're going to give up bowling medium pace. And that was the first time I ever bowled them. And then he went into the league, and we had a chap called Jackie Firth, who kept wicket for Fastley then, who kept, played with the Yorkshire. And he'd seen me bowl them in the nets, and we suddenly got on a wet wicket at Salt Air in a Bradford League match. And he said, well, you can bowl spinners better than our left arm spinner, the pro who'd never spun a ball in his life. And I tried spinners then for the first time, got five for five. And kind of from then on, whenever it was a bit damp or helpful, I bought spinners. Well, of course, the whole world of spin opened to you then. Can we start with the basics uh, in an attempt to help other people? First of all, how do you grip the ball? Again, this can vary a great deal on the size of the hand. There's no doubt about that. I've only got a, a short fingers, but I've got a broad hand, so I can get a reasonable grip. Now, if the ball, in my day, I used to use a reader ball, I felt better than it's smaller. I could hold it then across the seam like that. I could hold it like that. But if the ball was a bigger one, then I used to push it into the seam like that, because it was easier than going across the seam. So that basically was my grip for the off spinner. And, and then he would go clockwise to spin it in, in, that, in that way. It's got to be a clockwise motion to do that. And uh, obviously, depending on certain wickets, I used to experiment a little bit with the grip, because you find on some pitches the ball would turn if you hold it a certain way, and not if you hold it another way. So I would experiment from going from there to there, to all in the space of three or four overs, just trying different balls and see which seemed to grip on that surface. So the message is really uh, experiment if you want to. Give it a couple of overs, get loose, get line length, get confidence, and as soon as you've got a bit of confidence, if nothing's happening, just experiment. But if, if everything's going all right, stay with it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just make a point to you here, Stuart? You, you ball off spinners now a little bit, like the modern generation ball them, which is a bit different from my generation. In other words, you tend not to get as much body, but the arm comes very much higher. So you tend to bowl it like this over the top. Where in, in our day, I'm going back to Jim Lake and people like this, we would get more body, the front foot would drop like that. So when you actually put the foot down, we would actually spin and make a circle market. Your foot tends to come there, because when you get into the delivery crease, you're getting there and you come in there, and you're going very high with the arm, so you're going over the top there, which is nice high. Uh, this is the modern generation. I mean, there's lots playing out there the same way. But I still believe that the more body you can get into it from there and coming round there, and it's much easier to bowl the drift ball, and also you get as much spin from this part there as you do with, you tend to go over the top there. Right. And you'll find you get a lot more spin using the body like that. Just, uh, just, just try it for an odd ball, see how we go. It's not easy to just suddenly change. Now, you, did you think you changed at all then? It felt different, yeah. Yeah, it, did, it didn't change much, yeah. you know, it very, very slightly. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I wanted to put you off completely. Yeah. This is just what I feel about it. Just try and make that foot drop square. Right. Just think about that and this ball, nothing else right. but dropping square. How square do you think you dropped then? I felt like it was pointing. Yeah, over you, to you're, you're about there. Right. Just, so just try and bowl one ball so you get that. You, you've got to do it as you pivot. You know, right. as you jump, that's when you do it right. on the pivot. Just see if you can come almost square with that front line. Right. Just, okay. just see if you can. Just think on doing that one ball. Just see if you can do that. Not quite. It looked like you were going to do it, but just before it hits the deck, just before you put that, you look like you're going to do that. Yeah. But before it hits, it lands there. Just turn slightly. Yeah, just two or three inches before you hit it. Yeah, it still does the same. It's surprising. I mean, I, you can't just work on this in, in an instant, but I feel that if you can just get square with that foot, this will allow you to get the more body, and then everything becomes easier, that the arm ball becomes easier to bowl, right. because from a, a very high up air action, it's difficult to make the arm ball go. Right. Whereas you get body there and using it across, and it's much easier to make that go. Yeah. And also, you will get that body action to do that. Right. Let's have another go, see if we can get that.
Can you, can you bowl an arm ball? Can you yeah. see if someone will go? With, with the normal action? Yeah, just bowl it as you bowl it. I mean, the wind's... The breeze is quite good. It should go a little bit, probably. The, the ball itself still looked to be going a little bit not yeah. that straight up, didn't it, as it went yeah. down. When you, we've got this two-piece ball, of course, which people yeah. can see, and you can see if it's going down straight. That looks to be just wobbling a bit, which it's got to keep fairly straight for the right. arm ball. You've got the arm finishing nicely. The arm does finish across there. Right. It's a good finish, not going down there. It, you know, it's not going down the offside. It's coming across your body and finishing there. So you've got the movement of finishing there, which is good. Now, how do you build up this wonderful sequence of the run-up, the pivot, follow-through? Yeah, I, I must have been tremendously lucky in this because nobody ever really coached me in an action. And I forget, I grew up during the war when there was very little cricket or any coaching. But when I started going to the nets at Headingley, uh, I can remember some of the coaches when I was a youngster, 16, 17, they'd get me to run up and bowl, and they'd have the others watching and say, now, that's how you bowl. So I was just lucky that I did everything in the coaching book naturally. But now is the time to turn to somebody <coughs> else and say, this is what I advise. Well, it, it, I mean, I'd never be absolutely dogmatic on actions, because people are built differently and made differently. And I, I still believe that, basically, a thing that Lennon said to me years and years ago as a young says, cricket is a sideways game. Now, choose what you see these days. I still believe it's a sideways game. Because if you can get sideways and you can think of yourself as a cartwheel, in other words, just a wheel going round, it's nearly impossible not to bowl the ball straight. But if you're bowling very chest on and you're an arm bowler alone, then I think your direction is bound to, to waver. And this is what I see young spinners with the direction going. It's because they haven't got that left shoulder leading down the wicket. So I still believe basically it's a sideways on cartwheeling game. The run-up really, I believe all you need is enough momentum to get to the crease balanced and allow you to propel the ball at the speed you want to. I don't believe in running 35 yards, for instance, just for the sake of it as a quick bowler. I think as long as you've got sufficient pace and balance at the crease, that's all it needs. You've got a good left leg, because uh, the secret of bowling off is, of course, to get the nip and everything is, is when you come down as you bowl it, is to go onto that. And you're doing that nicely. You've got a good left leg, that's good, and that, that part's good there. It's your chest part that needs to go more. Can you just bowl a few around the wicket, see if it's easy to get more sideways on? It's more or less the same from round as over. You don't change it or anything. No. I mean, I used to find sometimes that when we'd done a lot of overs in the old days, you know, you did a thousand overs, you got a bit tired and you, you bowled a bit lazy. Yeah. And by going round the wicket, it made you just put a bit more body into it. I didn't? feel better yeah. this season not bowling round yeah. the wicket than mm. I do when I bowl over. Yeah. Well, it's not a bad thing if you can get yeah. the line right. It's something different, you see. Good line from round the wicket, that's where I want it to be. Off stump, off middle. I think what you tend to do a little bit, you tend to bowl a little bit in your run. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you tend to just rush through it rather than you get into here and then pause in there as you bowl. You, you go through it very, very quickly. And that's, I think, how you just lose that front foot a bit. Right. So you can kind of come up gently and get paused to there and then bowl it, get more paws in it. So we're bowling right arm over the wicket to a right-handed batsman on a good pitch. We're bowling at, shall we say, off stump or just outside, and the ball, we hope, will turn in. But how do we get flight? Well, flight, again, uh, I always find it, you tend to come, the ball come more over the top of the hand like that. Your general finger spinner seems to be going more that way. A flight, the ball can come out over the top like that. And this is the thing that needs a lot of practice because the arm has still got to go through quickly, but let the ball come out slowly. 
and that's the difficult part of it, that your arm comes up quickly and the ball comes out slowly. But that takes a lot of practice. And that's the occasion when the ball dips in front of the batsman yeah. and drags him forward. I mean, somebody said to me, you don't flight it a lot. I said, if you can see the flight from the boundary edge, it's too much flight. All the flight that I need is for a batsman to think he's going to hit me on the floor and it goes in the air. That is sufficient because he's then caught mid-off, mid-off or wherever. You don't want to be so bad that it's a big obvious thing you can just smack it off the back foot. It's just sufficient to get them playing through the shot and the ball going in the air. I think the line for an off-spin is off-stump and just outside. In other words, if I can get the ball to spin, then I want to be able to get through the gate between bat and pad. So if I spin that much width of the bat, I want it to just go through between bat and pad if there's any gate there at all. If not, I hit the pad. So I'm looking that if the ball turns a little, I will probably hit off from middle to middle. If it doesn't, it's just going to miss off stump and I bring slip into play. So that basically is the line I would like to bowl on most wickets. And your offside field, <clears> given the slip, I would have a slip, uh, a short third, extra coverish, and a deepish mid off. Now, if it's a very goodish wicket where maybe only just an odd ball is going to turn, I will probably put another one in the covers and have four in the covers. Because if I can bowl that line well, then I don't need my deep square to start with. If somebody starts sweeping me from out, outside of something, then that you've got to rearrange. But to find the plain orthodox way, I would have four in the covers and a slip on a good wicket. Let's talk about uh, defensive bowling, because a lot of professional cricket, and certainly a lot of amateur cricket, mm -hmm. is limited over. And really, the object might be not to get hit too far. Yes, well, I'd say one day defensive bowling is completely different to if you're under pressure, say, in a test match or a four day match. But one day defensive bowling, I would bowl round about leg and middle. I wouldn't bowl outside leg stump, I see a lot of it outside. I would be trying to hit leg and middle to leg stump. Then I'd be going to six on the leg side. I'd just have the three on the offside, the short third, extra cover, and mid off. Again, they could vary me off, could go back a little, or the short third could go back, depending on the batsman. But that would be my basic feel, with three men up and probably three men out. Uh, on the leg side, I'd have a deep square, deep mid-wicket, long on, one saving one there, one mid-wicket and short. That's six fielders there on the leg side, saving one. And that's the line I would bowl then in a one-day match. But in a test match, I'd, then I wouldn't go to leg stump so much. I was still trying to bowl very, very straight, but I'd be still looking about off stump line and maybe take one across to the onside. But I would basically still be trying to bowl more or less the same because it, in test match cricket, it's still about getting wickets. One day cricket, it's a matter of how many runs are scored and how many overs, different things. Let's move now around the wicket. Uh, different line, ball is usually turning, or tell us, when would you bowl around the wicket? I go around the wicket for two reasons. The first one, not many people have done, Sometimes, in our day, when we bowled a lot of overs, you got a bit tired towards the end of the season, and you thought, well, it should be turned on this pitch, and it wasn't. And I thought, I must be bowling a bit lazy. By that, I mean I'm not getting the body into it. So I will go around the wicket, because then that makes you've got to accentuate your left shoulder coming round and bowling across it. And that makes you put your body back into it. So I go around sometimes, just for a few overs, to make myself get the body into the bowling. The other time, of course, if the ball is turning. And if it's turning, I will be going around the wicket to bowl round about off stump off the middle line. And I would expect them to be in leg stumpish, something like that, from round the wicket. And that's the line I would aim if I was bowling round. Or, in case I could go down to left-hander as well, of course, which is another matter. Right, Paul, now what do you think about off stump? How you want to bowl it yourself? Yeah, you, you want to get sideways on? Are you I'm going high? Get sideways as much as possible. Yeah. I get my arm as high as possible. Yeah. Sometimes I find it hard. Let's get it high. I use, I'm usually a low arm person yeah. looking for that extra you see, spin. A lot of great offerings in the past were never particularly high. They weren't yeah. over there. Like a lot of the modern lads are trying to bowl it, they were always about there. They were not fantastically high, but they all got body. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're using that or not. I try to get around as much as possible because yeah. my arm is quite low. I yeah. I've got to try and get it up a bit higher. A bit higher yeah. But it's quite low. I'm trying to get as much turn as possible. OK, well, let's just bowl a few and see how we go then. At least you all ball straight anyway, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's not, your body action's quite good here. Mm -hmm. The way you're dropping your feet and you're using your body, that's not bad at all. I think because you're trying to get your arm very high, yeah. you are tending to go 
up here a little bit rather than do it all naturally and let it just come in with the flow of the body and everything. I mean, this part looks quite good, your feet position are quite good, and really just trying to go over the top, that's probably because you're trying to get your arm very high. But there's no great detriment in that. But I just, most of them just find the other off, so it's just about, and just all flow there. And you're kind of going over there. But there's no, there's no great detriment in that. No. Yeah, yeah, you're a slightly unusual bowler, actually. Yeah, all the closest uh, things. I mean, you've got, you've got uh, good body action, good position of a lot of the old leg spinners, and yet you've got the delivery action here of Lance Gibbs who wasn't anywhere near as uh, sideways on as you. He was more chest on and bowled it like that. And you've got the delivery here of Lance Gibbs. But you, where it comes over yeah, here yeah. like this. But you've got the body yeah. of how Jim Lake is how you used to bowl it. Completely, you have two opposites here. It's a bit unusual here. It? You know, often you get the body like that, with somebody yeah. that goes over the top. Usually they're a little bit ch chest yeah. on. In, when I usually come over the top here, mm. I find, obviously, because I get this in drift. Yeah. So the way most often wants the ball to go away, the then it comes back. Yeah. The ball comes in, That's drifts right. in. Mm. It's, it's unusual. You've got 50 50 of each. <laughs> but uh, do you ball an arm ball and go through the other way as well? Sometimes, mainly a quicker ball. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, arm ball, if you're not on a bad day, it's hard to control, I find. Yeah. yeah. Just a word to captains uh, when are off spinners best used? Uh, I always used to try, if it was a dog or so, to get them on against a new batsman. Uh, I think it, too many times we just see the quicks against the new batsmen, and yet many players are better playing of quicks at the start of this than they are of spinners. And I just think that if you get an off spinner on against a new batsman who's not a great player of spinners, you've got a great chance of squeezing batting pads out or a court or something like that. And I think they really should be used against a new batsman more often than they are. Mm. We've talked about the orthodoxies over and around the wicket, the stock ball, but uh, there are variations, aren't there? Very much so. Um, the arm ball is a very useful ball. In fact, I did do a, a check one year, I think it was one of my last years at York, and I got 135 wickets. And I actually went through all the season, and I actually got 41 wickets with the arm ball. That's a high percentage. Explain to us what the arm ball is. Well, what I used to do, I used to hold the ordinary spinner, I used to hold like that. And for, all, for the arm ball, all I did was to move the ball with the seam there. So I kept the fingers wide apart, just the same. Now, the only difference is that when you let the ball go, you would let it go just straight and across your body with the finish of the action, which is important. If you don't go across the body, then the ball won't swing. Yeah. And that was the only difference between the off spinners would do that. So people only really saw the fingers wide apart running up. I mean, I once spent an hour telling David Green how to tell it, and then did him with it next morning. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't know what to say really to you on that. I, I wouldn't just change your round because your body action is good. Now, if you're happy with delivering the ball from over the top, then fair enough, keep going. What did you say about that, the in drift that I usually get? Oh, get? Sorry, if you can do it, it's very unusual. Yes. I mean, that, that's, that's great. I mean, not, I've never seen off-spinners really that have drifted in. Yeah. As you say, they all drift out. So, I mean, if you can do that, that's an unusual ploy, which is very good for you. Don't, don't lose it. OK, then. Uh... Oh, that's good, is that? I've always said you get as much spin from the action as you do from the fingers. In other words, you've got a straight up, the arm must come across the front of the body to finish on the onside there. And that movement of doing that across your body is you get as much spin from that as you do from this. There's no doubt about that. So it is the natural action for the arm ball as well. But sometimes, if bowlers tend to try to bowl an arm ball, because they're doing something different, they probably don't finish the action off. And it goes there, and then the ball goes down the leg side. Now, I used to use the arm ball in two ways. I could bowl it around about off stump, off middle, and just like run away, which would bring Phil Sharp into play at slip. Lewis got Sharp bowled well, with you remember the day? And uh, <laughs> we could do those sort of things. But also, if I knew it was going to swing, and definitely be a sort of a swingy day, and most days I could swing it, then there'd be a lot of times I'd be looking to bowl at leg stump and maybe just outside, because as we all know, the first thing that most batsmen are looking to do when they attack off is to look for the ball to sweep. So I would also look at the ball at, at leg stump and just outside. The thing when you bowl it is, you don't want to bowl your normal length. 
because if you bowl exactly good length, this is the length that a good sweeping batsman will hit. It wants to be fractionally fuller, so when he goes for the sweep shot, the ball tends to go underneath the bat. Not a full toss, but almost pitching in the block hole. And if you can do that, more often than not, we'll miss the sweep shot, and then you have a great chance of LBW. You've got to know then it's swinging that you can set it off leg stump, otherwise you just go down leg side and maybe go for four runs. How much is uh, off spinning and spinning generally a matter of uh, liaison between you and your wicketkeeper? Oh, it's a, it's a great thing. Uh, I know Jimmy Binks who played with Yorkshire for a long time and we had uh, well, ten years or more together. And Jimmy was pretty good at assessing batsman's weaknesses. Sometimes you didn't always see. He's in a different position, obviously, from behind the batsman. And he was very, very helpful to me about saying certain things. This bloke doesn't look so good just outside off or try something. And he used to pass many useful messages on that way. Of course, you also got the chance that uh, sometimes if left-handers were in particular, He'd say this fellow just shuffling down, just bowling down the leg side, and I get a leg side stump and things like that. So it is good that you work together. And when you go <coughs> out to bowl, you watch the spot. Yeah, I, I used to set my gaze on the batsman because you're kind of reading his mind, really. That's the important thing. You're looking for when he's wanting to come down the wicket to you, and he, you, you kind of get a sixth sense of when he's coming. You can maybe see the, the grip just tightens on the bat handle. Little things like that, and I'm always looking at that, not the crease or anything like that. That, the run-up, should be completely automatic. You shouldn't have to look at the line. Just look at the batsman, see what he's doing, if he's looking to move or anything like that. Very few batsmen could get inside me and get me down there, because I was quick enough to just follow them all the time. And you can only do that if you really concentrate on the batsman. So to sum it up, Raymond, we're talking about spinning the ball first before length? Yes, I would always say learn to spin the ball, because that's the hardest part of the game particularly for a youngster, learn to spin and practice and practice until you can bowl length and line. Because if you go the other way and learn to bowl length and line, then you start to spin it, you lose length and line anyway. So it's important to spin it first and then length and line from practice. Ray Illingworth of Yorkshire, Leicestershire and England on the art of off-spinning. Ray was also one of England's most successful captains at home and abroad, with an unrivaled and often uncanny ability to plot the downfall of opposing batsmen. Indian slow left-arm bowler Bishan Bedi was one of the most cunning spinners in the history of the game, a master of deceptive flight and spin. Bedi believed that from the firmest bat came the best chances, and the crowds cheered whenever the stocky Sikh in the coloured patka joined the attack. From a similar action came the orthodox leg spinner and the ball undercut to slide quickly in off the pitch. Betty took 266 wickets for India in 67 tests. I started out in 12, 13, but I, ever since I took out cricket, I'm in left arm bowling. I can't think of having done anything else, really. And uh, living in a small town like Amritsar, I used to, there was nothing else to do. There was no television, there was no um, other source of entertainment except keep on bowling for seven or eight hours a day. Where did you bowl? Uh, well, we had a ground called Gandhi Ground. And uh, of course, I was coached by a chap called Gyan Prakash. But he never told me anything about spin bowling. He was quite happy that I was bowling for about six, seven hours a day, and that's what satisfied him. Let's talk about this great art of left arm spin. First of all, show us the grip. Well, if you look at it, it's quite simple, really. I, I rest the ball in the small of the palm, and it's not very tight, it's not very loose. It's just firm enough to be in control. And all I have to do is, this is the wrist. I don't undercut it unless I have to bowl from wide off the crease, which means I just roll it and don't spin it. That is for variation's sake. And that variation aspect, I think it comes with experience when you want to do outfit to man. But initially, if you can learn to spin the ball as much as possible for a youngster, that is more important. More important than length. 
lengthen line. Well, they, that'll come gradually. That's for sure. So first you must spin it. You must spin it. And I remember having a word with the late Jim Laker. He also used to say, well, you must spin the ball first. And I remember having a word with Sir Donald Bradman. And he said, well, if you're teaching a kid how to bat, you must tell him how to hit the ball first. And all the rest, forward defence and the backward defence and all this nonsense that comes with experience. Come as close to the stumps as possible. And when you bowl, see how many revolutions there are in the air. Mm. Right? Yeah. Keep your head still, eyes on the ball, and see how many revolutions right. there are in there. The more revolutions, yep. the more bite, bounce you'll get okay. off of the kick. It's all about, we, got, we are spinners, right? We've got to spin the ball, that's yep. important. <clears throat> Yeah, just have a look at the, the way you grip the ball. All right? Mm hmm Now, this grip, if you could... Um, see this? Yep. It's just in small of the palm. Mm. Right? And this is a supporting finger, supporting thumb, and this is spinning finger. It should not be... It should not... You shouldn't hold it in the fingers like this. But then you lose control, really. And uh, if it is holding, and you've got to do it, uh, tweak your wrist like this, instead of undercutting. Mm. But then um, you're not spinning it. Yeah. And all you're doing is bringing the ball in with the arm, which is a natural delivery. Yeah. You don't have to arm ball for a left-hander. It's absolutely natural. You don't have to work at it. No. But you could work at a spin. Yeah. Because... Uh, if you come close to the stumps and see how often you can spin the ball again and again and again and again. And if you can master one delivery, just one. Yeah. One delivery, if you can master it, is at your control. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you can have the cricketing ball at your feet. If you master one ball, that's all. Do it again and again, mm -hmm. day after day. Week after week, month after month, year after year. How old are you now? 21. 21? Yeah. Oh, you, you've got a world ahead of you. <laughs> Creaking world ahead of you, really. Uh, I'll only get that side on in my delivery side. Right? This arm is going up, and this foot is bracing. It's not, this, this knee is not bending. It has to brace straight for this body weight to come on to the front foot. And then, you see, it is like this. It lands like this. But then, uh, before you deliver, this is the position of the foot. And you pivot. Just a slight, slightest bit. Don't finish up pivoting like this, because when the toe points towards fine leg, again you are becoming square on. And this game, what are you doing is side on game. Save your energy as much as possible, only for the last couple of steps. In there, there should be more revolutions. Now when, for the sake of uh, the surprise the newcomer who just come in, I'll probably go wide as a crease and see if the ball is coming in. Right? You, it is established quickly in the cricket world that you had a most wonderful action in terms of rhythm and pivot and follow through. Did you consciously learn those facets? No, I think that was the only natural gift I had and I kept lies on it. I, I mean, um, I've known a lot of natural cricketers like uh, Sivaram Krishnan or uh, LS. You, might, you must have seen the leg spinner from Dras. He had a beautiful action, everything going for him, but uh, he didn't work at his cricket and uh, in no time the poor chap is uh, not to be heard of.
So how can we help young cricketers to get these three elements, the approach, the rhythm, the, rhythm, the pivot and the follow-through? That's the rhythm. You see, if you run up, the delivery stride and the follow to the right, then everything is right. But if you f fail in one or two, which is, say, the run-up, like you, if you think of a run-up like Bob Willis's, or a delivery stride like Malcolm Marshall's, that's technically speaking, I mean, they wouldn't be the ideal aspect of coaching manual. But they used to make it up with the follow-through and a lot of determination to get the man out the other end. That is what made them great bowlers. Now, mentally, we have to prepare ourselves to get people out. Yeah. As spinners, you've got to buy a wicket sometimes, right? You've got to outwit the batsman. That is uh, the most essential aspect. And that you can only do when you're walking back to the mark. And you've got to, this thinking process going on. What he's doing, whether he's good off the back foot or whether he's good off the front foot, right? And if uh, you can acquire one particular instinct, that is drawing a man out of the crease and hoping to get him stumped. I used to get a lot of pleasure um, getting people out stumped mm -hmm. because uh, I thought I'd, I'd got him out twice, you know. Once I beat him in the air, once off the wicket. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't know how much turn there is. The batsman doesn't know. So that gave, used to give me a lot of thrill, getting men out stumped. Mm -hmm. So if you can, you know, invite a man out, come on. And you've got the ring of fielders there. Plus, at the same time, uh, work is a psychology. As a bowler, uh, spin bowler, you can't knock a man down, can you? No. With a beam ball or a bounce. <laughs> but you, you, all you have to do is just outwit him, outthink him. And I bowled to batsmen like Barry Richards, Sobe Vindich, Sobe Gary Sobe, some of the great ones. <clears throat> and I think uh, uh, the best Part of my cricketing knowledge was, all my cricketing experience was that uh, I used to work on their ego. Mm. No great batsman likes two or three close infielders close in, you know. And he wants he'll do something stupid. Mm. Provided you know what you're doing best, let us see how how well you can loop it, flight it, toss it up, and then. Turn it, it should drift inside on the middle leg and then leave the stump. Okay. <clears throat> but this arm, you're not utilizing this arm at all. This arm is here. It has to go up, right? And as it's coming down, this arm goes like this, right? Yeah. It follows, propels. And when you pivot, the hip movement, when you pivot here, this is how the hip movement comes into play. Now this shoulder has to follow the ball and the body has to follow the shoulder in the follow through. Now, how do you define uh, rhythm? Tell me. When we <coughs> say, well, Sir Richard Hadley, or we talk about uh, uh, Ian Botham, or we talk about Ray Illingworth or somebody, he's got a good rhythm. How do you define rhythm? What do you Smoothness through, through the run up, through the delivery stride, carrying on down the wicket. Yeah, three things. Yeah. They must coordinate yeah. your run up, the delivery stride, and your follow through. You can have a bad run-up, like Bob Willis used to have. You can have a terrible delivery side, like uh, Malcolm Marshall he used to look like this. But he used to make it up with his follow-through. You know, shoulder following the ball, and then the body behind uh, following the ball. But the eyes are on the target. They don't lose sight of the batsman, the bowler now. You're bowling the batsman, yeah. under the stumps. Right? Yeah. And the idea is 
Every time you bowl, you, you must think that I'm going to get him out of this, uh, this ball. Or at least he's played me. I used to get to kick myself in the bottom whenever I, I was cut like this. You don't set field for bad bowling. You set field to get people out. Unfortunately, that is missing at the moment because of one day cricket. What was your mental approach? What was in your mind when you turned round and prepared a bowl to, to batsman? Well, my first thing was to get the man out, how to plan it. Now, you first work out the strength. You've seen a man where he's uh, good off the front foot or off the back foot. I would hate people playing me off the back foot, really, because they've seen the spin, they've seen the bounce, and they have found enough room to place the ball wherever they want it. And uh, I always wanted the man to come out and play me out of the crease. And the maximum satisfaction that I derived was whenever I got a man out stumped. Um, it always uh, gave me great thrill because I, I thought I got him out twice, once in the air, once out of the game. <laughs> Let's talk about good pitches where the ball doesn't turn very much. What line would you bowl and to what sort of field? Well, I'd still bowl an attacking line. You know, I, I, I think uh, I was lucky that uh, at the time when we, we bowl, I mean, when I say we, I talk about Chandrasekhar, Prasanna and Venkat. He bowled with very good closing catches. We were very lucky. And that helped to um, gain a confidence. They helped us to gain a confidence. We helped them to gain their confidence. But nowadays, not many people are prepared to stand in the societal position unless you're a newcomer. In any case, you've got the helmets on now. But uh, in our days, there weren't any helmets. And uh, you had to be terribly, terribly accurate. So day good, in and day out. Good pitch, your standard ball is your uh, the spinner turning away from the right-hander, and you'll be bowling where? Middle stump on a good pitch? Uh, middle and off. Middle and off. Yep. Right. On a, quick, on a pitch that turned then? Like that, then I would be a little quicker. Not as fast as uh, Deadly Underwood, but a little quicker. And uh, rely more on leg and middle, where the ball, if you beat the bat, Read the stumps, no good. You must take an edge or hit the stumps. That's very important. But uh, frankly speaking, I, I seldom relish pulling on a bad wicket. I used to enjoy you know, tossing the ball up and beating the man in the air and have a laugh about it. <laughs> really. I remember in 72 when you got a side out to India and uh, Michael Braley, he, he was then. Uh, in India as a journalist. And he wrote back home and he says, uh, English batsmen are too stuck in the crease. They're not using the feet enough. And fair enough, uh, after the season was over, I mean, our series was over, uh, I was uh, contracted in North Ends. And uh, first match against Middlesex in North Ends. And Michael's still batting with 20 yard runs. And it's my first over, mind you. And the ball was still in my hand. And Michael Kent jumped out to shake hands with me. And you're stunned by a mile. <laughs> I said, well, that'll teach you how to use your feet. <laughs> you're not utilizing the right arm at all. Let this right arm go up. And down. Like that. Be conscious about your right arm and the delivery side. Ball. The top half, the swivel on top half, right? Should be very um, smooth and uh, very. Uh, it has to have some elasticity. Okay. Yeah. You know. Delivery side is still too big for your for your size of yourself. You know. 
Let the body weight come onto the front foot. How many hours do you bowl in a day? Ten to three. Well, the longer you bowl, the better you're going to be. Yeah. That's as simple as that. I was always...